All right, we're getting it going over there. Okay, dude, I'm at a roadblock here. These are fatter and different fittings than these to go into the brakes. I checked this machine or whatever. They're closer, but still different. This is the ABS and all of that. So those fittings are close, but there's four of them for individual braking. And here there's only two. So, and they won't fit, like these aren't, they're all this size, not this bigger gauge. So, um, and then also that size is different. So I'm not sure what your thoughts are. Cause I was thinking about maybe just cutting these like you suggested, flaring them and sticking them in there with the new fittings, but they won't fit with those fatter, uh, cause the pipes are bigger. So the, it won't seal. What are your thoughts? Okay. So it is getting late, but I need to figure out these brakes you figure this out um let me go see if i can get this master cylinder off of the chevy cab hopefully it's not raining too bad but get it off the chevy cab so that i can at least inspect it and look to see what needs to happen for the to get it adapted to the honda honda so i need to need to check both of these things out so let's get on this all right it is actually getting kind of dark out it's here in alaska in august so let's see what size do we need here oh probably 11 16 or three quarters there i'm gonna take these off this brake booster that way i can take this off and start figuring out how it connects to uh all that jazz and junk there. That way we can look at the Honda. I was going to originally try to cut the pipe, the brake line, I should say, and flare it and then stick it into the Honda brake booster. So that'd make it really easy and simple. But I think I'm gonna have to adapt that brake booster to the Honda frame or Honda body. So let's go. Seem to be kind of loose, a little bit more loose than I imagined it would be. That's what I expected it to be like, it's like that. There we go. Okay, we have the Chevy brake booster and master cylinder which if i can get to adapt to the honda firewall would be great i think all i would need to do is maybe drill different uh, holes to fit these but there's that or well and then if i do that i'm gonna have to get this shortened up to match this length which is clearly shorter so, time to measure up. So this one, it's only four and a half. And that shortens that up a lot. 
which realistically is just fine if you can get it to do that. So we're looking at essentially trying to make this go in there. Probably have to drill a hole right there. It's still a little too far. Still better though. Let's see if we can figure out how to pull this apart. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna, th I'm gonna go see if, how, how much room we even have for this thing. Um, it's not too much bigger than that, but I think it's going to be interesting. Um, but what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get part of the old bracket from the Chevy. Drill a hole because this right here is about four and a half inches, right about here. So from the firewall, it should be there. Four and a half inches. Oh, so it's a little bit further back. Nonetheless, so it's about midway. You know, it's about eight, like right here. So what I'm thinking is get that bracket and put a hole in it because there's a flat spot. Or just get a piece of metal, slide it over here, and bend it over. So essentially, the hole is going to be sitting back like this, but it's going to be held on by a nut on the front end over here. That way, it's still connected here, but essentially it's pulling from that position. I think that would work. So let's go see if this thing will fit. Hey, this is gonna be a tight fit, I believe. I left my stand. Oh, this is definitely, definitely tight. I wonder. I wonder if there's a way to do a booster delete on this thing where you just take this off and just hook that up essentially I don't know darn 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 that is I want to take the valve covers off <laughs> I mean it would have to be I have to take the whole brake booster off to get the valve covers off. I don't know how practical that is. I mean, maybe for the sake of getting this running, I can get the adapter plate on there and whatnot, but yeah, I don't know. So I think for the sake of getting it running, what I'll do is I will put it in here like this because I don't believe I'll get the valve cover off even with the other booster in here. Um, so I'll get that other, or get this holes drilled back here right back in there to the right size and then just bolt that right up and then I haven't looked at this yet but in here then what I can do is that's whoa, that's where it reaches right there which is obviously too far on the wrong side at the moment but get that on the right side get this get this post on this side and then have that um like that piece of metal come back because this is the rod that goes through the honda one so this actually just goes right through this hole anyways it was right through that hole to hold it so just get that piece, hold it on there, and it should do the exact same thing. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Tomorrow we'll get some holes drilled, measured out and drilled, and then, uh, yeah, should be golden. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to do is slide this over. I mean, it might have to cut and use different pieces and whatnot and drill into this or flatten this out and then drill into it, whatever. But essentially what I'm going to do is slide this down like so. And that looks like it might be right about four and a half. One second, let me grab this, uh, this tape measure. Okay. So let's see, this is, okay, so that green dot here, let's see. So four and a half is about right there. Can you see, see that mark right there? Dude, that's money. That is money. 
drill it in right on this, right on that spot right here, that shiny spot. Drill it in. And then this piece will be, it'll actually have to be on the other side, so it'll be like this way. But that piece, drill the hole right here. And then that will pull. And the brake will line up and everything, but that'll essentially pull this, like that. And I'll have a nut on the side, or on this side, holding that in. Man, I think that'll, I think that will work. Cross your fingers, that'd be fantastic. <sighs> Looks like I'm gonna be uh, attempting to do the brakes tomorrow. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to get this mounted and they will actually work. Let's find out, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so what I've decided to do, that's what I'm gonna try and do with this. All right, so I'm gonna bend this straight, so this piece will be sticking where my finger is, right? So it'll be sticking straight out this way, which comes almost directly to the four and a half inch mark from this side. Now, what's nice is that it's a little bit bigger, so it has a little bit more play. That'll come in handy because what I'm going to do, I'm going to make, I'm going to get uh, some of the steel from the frame mounts that we made. I'm going to take some steel and make a plate, backing plate for this. So the reason I'll be making a backing plate is because if you see in there, there's obviously, um, uh, what do you call those, uh, reinforced tubes that the bolts are going in. So I'm going to be drilling holes that are bigger than that. So what I'm gonna do is drill those holes and I'll be missing some of those uh, reinforcement uh, tubes. And so I'm gonna put a backing plate on that so that it reinforces that whole wall there. And I'll make it probably an inch bigger in size on every side. That way it has a good amount of firewall and uh, we'll be able to sit on that accurately and so it won't weigh down essentially it'll serve the same purpose as those reinforcement tubes so i just have to go make it so let's go do this okay after much work and effort i made an adapter plate Whoa, that trippy all right so this is how it works this is the brake booster that we're going to use because this is off the chevy ties right in this is to adapt the firewall to this, this is what I'm gonna do. Essentially, I'm gonna line this up with these holes, bolt this up, and then I'll be able to drill the holes in the firewall for this, and then just put this right through, and it'll mount right up. And that right there is going to be prime, because this, I'll have that little bracket, that I'll set back here, tie right into the pedal, and it should work just fine. So let's go get this mounted, the firewall drilled, and this little loopy do thing drilled up, so that way we can uh, stick this on here tonight. All right, so this bolts up pretty nicely. Just marked the holes, sorry for that glare there. There we go. Just marked up the holes to start drilling. So I'll drill right in here, should be right on the edges of that bracket in there. So I'll be able to bolt this up there and then I'll just bolt the um, uh, booster right there and it should be golden. So I think that'll work pretty dang well. I'm pretty excited about that. So let's get drilling and figure out how to connect the rest of it. Okay, it is midnight and the brake booster is installed. Uh, some things went on this evening, so I didn't record. Um, I was kind of in the zone and I'm not gonna take that out because that was, that was crazy to put in. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, that being said, this is what it looks like from the inside. Now that you know that it fits barely, but it does, clears, 
There's all wires and everything hooked up the lines. It's good. Let's walk around on the inside. Talk about a hack job. I ended up not using my adapter plate because it would not center properly. So I had to rip all this out of here. But got some washers on there. I'm going to end up putting the brake pedal right here and then making my little piece right on this joint that'll connect. So that's the next step. All right, so this is like Christmas right now. Christmas for adults right here. Not there, right here. Radiator hose, radiator fluid, brake fluid, hose clamps, fuel tank hose, fuel tank, radiator, the old one, but nonetheless, also got some bolts because I'm gonna take off that spacer that was on the front here. Right, for the fan, you take that off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the radiator right in here, right in this space. Right, it's gonna it's gonna be pretty close, I think, but I think it'll fit. And then uh, what we'll do is put the fans, electric fans, on the outside here. That way, we'll have room. Um, because the transmission cooler and radiator will be right here. There was obviously a lot of room for the radiator, AEC condenser, transmission cooler, auxiliary fan, blah, 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 that I had on here before. So my thought is, is that in that grill space, there'll be plenty of room for those fans. I'm hoping so. If not, we'll just cut it out and make room. Because <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, but that way I can have a front mounted radiator at the moment. I think eventually I would like to put it in the rear, but, um, that's expensive, and so that isn't gonna happen right now. Um, but onto the brakes, I did get brake line um, that'll fit exactly where I need to go, and then we're gonna get this bracket mounted up. So my brakes, in theory, should be done today. So let's get on this. I'll show you what I'm doing now. Okay, so with the extension. We got the brake line right here, and then this piece right here. So with this 24 inch gap, they didn't have any 24 inch pieces. They had 30 or 212s. So I just got 212s because I didn't want to flare it, cut it, do all that jazz for a brake line. Just buy 212s, that equals 24. You know, sometimes school paid off. <laughs> so we're going to just basically throw it in right here, and it should mount right up and be golden so let's do that and just like that it is in i'm just gonna leave it like this so it can rattle against and make lots of noise and wear a hole in the brake lines that's what i'm thinking what do you guys think so i just straightened this out with the already pre-made holes from the current or the 78's brake setup and from this edge to that hole is an inch and a quarter so what i think i'm gonna do is just cut that and use this why not <laughs> let's put it on okay so just cut that piece off and this side was the bent side i just cut that off and bent it the other way because the pin is more of this size not that size so we're gonna use the pin that goes in the honda pedal on this and this is going to go on the chevy brake booster and basically it's just going to slide on there and the pin should go right in here cotter pin to it <laughs> brake should work let's hope all right so this is the brake booster piece cotter pin so in the ridge line this actually goes the opposite direction but because this brake booster levers right here I'm going to put the cotter pin on the other side and I'm just going to bolt this right to that and it should be good to go. I mean, it's right up against there. Just need to tighten it down and it should be golden, man. So that is fantastic. Oh yeah. That's how it's going to be. And I found a random nut that will fit. 
Oh. Find a random nut here. Oh, not this one. That was the wrong random nut. Here it is. All right, and it's even got Loctite, got a washer. Everything should be golden. So let's go. <laughs> okay, so, so this was back here like so. Tightening this down, pushed this pedal back just a little bit. So now it doesn't come back. How you adjust that, you just twist this out of position. Slide it till it's compressed. Twist it back and you're good to go. And now you'll have actual brake lights, which is pretty dang sweet. There we go. So there you have it. There's my brake pedal adapter. And here's my cotter pin and such. Just use the old Chevy stuff. Now I got a working functional brake pedal, brake lights, and all of that jazz with the Chevy uh, brake booster and such. And then you just gotta get it plugged in. Apparently I had it upside down. There we go. All right, there it is. Got a functioning brake pedal, all Honda interior. Who said you couldn't put a ridge line on an old Chevy frame? Pfft. Better redneck and eyes. What? <laughs> so what I'm doing is I just took off the bumper. That way I can fit this radiator in here. I think I'm gonna have to cut this just right across. And I think the radiator, essentially, might have to just take off this bracket. Just break that off there. But I'm pretty sure the, the radiator actually fit right up in here. I just have to see if I can get it in there with the bumper off of it. Just cut, I just don't want to bend more of the fins because this thing's like $1,000 or whatever at O'Reilly's. So I don't really want to get another radiator for this. But anyways, I think I could slide it right up in here and then put the bumper back on and it should, should be solid. So, which if that is the case, just build some, just bolt on some brackets right here to hold the radiator and it'd be golden. It'd be so nice. Or maybe even get the core support that this was using in the 78 and put it right there. Maybe I'll do that. Got it to fit. Now, Sometimes it just takes a little persuasion. I had to uh, persuade these edges over here at the top to be a little wider so that it could sit in there. I don't think it's gonna be able to be perfectly straight. I mean, I'm not quite done yet. Nonetheless, it's fitting. So we can make minor adjustments and tweaks. Do need to get it off of this a little bit so it's supported. Other than that, should should be good. Yeah. Okay, mocking this up here. Looking straight down at it. There's actually quite a bit of room now that I've uh, persuaded this side and trimmed it. Nonetheless, I have a little bit of gap with my foot down there. Plenty of room for hoses and everything else. And now the bumper actually fits as well. So there's room, which is fantastic. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that bottom core support so that I can bend it and screw it or bolt it into this cross member on both sides. That way, I have a core support and then I'll use the top. Um, I'll just make some C channel here or bend some metal and then maybe bolt it to 
flat piece of metal here. That way I have kind of like a quick release, so to speak. Or maybe I'll just do one piece of metal that'll come and hook over it like that. It's probably a better idea. And then it'll just kind of hold it like that against the core support on the bottom. And we should be golden with the radiator. Yeah, buddy. It's coming together. All right, in the process of making this core support, a little bit more difficult than I was imagining. So I hacked off the bottom, but it has all sorts of metal, bent metal and everything, and I don't want to spend the time trying to pull all those off. And quite frankly, I don't want to weld. So I'm trying to find a piece that's long enough to span this up the sides that way it's good so what i'm gonna do is i think i'm gonna try to use this top piece because it's kind of thin bendable pliable whatever you want to call it and uh yeah should be should be good it's only a couple bolts so i'm gonna pull those bolts out and then see where it goes it's starting to rain pretty good I got this top piece bent, cut, fits the radiator. Just gotta bend the front part so it wraps around. And then it should fit right in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some holes in this and this, and then just bolt this to that so it holds it up. And then I'll have a bracket coming across the top here that lays over and hooks it in. So, in theory, that should do it for a uh for the radiator but uh we'll see but i'm glad we can front mount it i do some uh persuading today it was pretty fun making stuff fit redneck and eyes as one of my friends holly says but yeah now it's time to clean up because of the rain beast okay guys i am off of work ready to work on the beast <laughs> all right look at it just look at it all right i'm feeling good today feeling energetic let me show you what i did real quick okay so last night i was uh makeshifting this which i still gotta like touch up and make sure it's painted and like make sure it's smooth so you don't cut yourself on it nonetheless got it mocked up and then i'll just have basically a bracket like this or so that's just coming over that as you tighten it i saw the trick on uh, a YouTube video where if you have it kind of angled like this, as you tighten it, it'll pull it back in. It is pretty snug. I gotta loosen it just a little bit so it doesn't rub a hole. And then I gotta make sure I got rubber under all the brackets and such. But as I tighten it, push it down like that and bring it in close. But it is pretty tight fit right now. I mean, like that's pretty solid. So I'm liking it. Everything clears, hoses and all. Then I'll get some electric fans and put it right here. Boom, boom, right? Get two electric fans, and just zoom some air through there. But look at that. And then let me get the bumper put up so you can see it. Okay, mocking it up. The radiator will fit, but I need to cut this like down right here along with that radiator that way because it's hitting this this is a little too far out for that bend so it's hitting like right here so i'll just cut that off get the grinder just make a nice little cut that way i can bolt these in be nice and sturdy there and then i'll have to drill another hole to bolt another one there because i did not cut that perfect um but with that cut this whoosh, you know someone down like that and then should be golden and mount up the bumper, mount up the top, hook up hoses, and that should be ready for fluid. All right, so this is where it's gonna be. Got those cut. Now I can drill holes, bolt those up, so there's at least two bolts holding that. But it should be pretty solid. And then later, when we mount and weld piece from here to here, we can actually just weld that to that piece, to that mount, and give that a little bit extra support so i'm pretty confident with that now i just have to give this a little bit more spacing in here because it's hitting 
don't know if you can really see it, but it's hit. but it's hitting this right in there just slightly. So I gotta, I just gotta cut that bolt shorter, and then make sure there's rubber in this area right there so it doesn't vibrate. Same thing on this side. It's got more room, but I want to make sure there's some space. I'll probably end up grinding this off so it's not hitting that. But yeah, other than that, it's like pretty dang good. Fitting well. <laughs> all right, now I just got to snug it all up. I got to get this rubber in here. Got to get a little rubber in there. Uh, but uh, check this out, dude. This actually looks legit. Have plenty of space. Whoa. Have plenty of space here. All the way around. I actually hacked up the top of the core support from the 78. This thing <laughs> hacked it up. It's right there on the ground. Smash it around with a hammer. Tapped it right into where the AC condenser brackets were. So I just drilled some holes into it. And now it's from this side, extremely solid. It is down here that there's a little bit of play. So I just need to get this in here, cinch that up a little bit, and it should be solid, man. And that will be perfect because I'll be able to put some electric fans right here. Boom, boom. Get some high volume going and Everything should work out perfect. <laughs> that is just asinine, man. Holy crap. All right, guys, so today we are doing the gas tank. So this is what I'm thinking we should do with the gas tank. 